G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today I am bringing you a tutorial that I promised you a while ago when I made Buttons Bunny that so many of you have made. I told you I would do a tutorial on his little pendant and it's a little resin button pendant. So many of you have asked me to do a tutorial on that one. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to be showing you how to work with casting resin, all the different ways that you can use it and it is the perfect addition for little pendants and accessories for your dolls and bears, your soft sculpture. And let's not forget ourselves, my resin pendants that I make, I wear myself. So it's gonna be a whole lot of fun and I hope you're gonna learn a lot. So let's get busy and I'll show you how it's done. So first let me show you here a few different ways that we can make these little bezel pendants. Now it was brought to my attention when I made up this little one, Buttons Bunny, and I added his little bezel pendant which has all of those buttons or nicely captured with a little thread bow in there. Um, nicely set in resin and so many of you wanted to know how to make this. They make the best little accessories for your dolls and bears and you can really personalise um, your work this way. So let me show you the different types of bezels that you can get and they're very inexpensive. So first up you can purchase just blank bezels like this. So this is a, an oval shaped one. This is quite big. I love the larger ones. Um, and they can be a little bit trickier to find, but these are so inexpensive. You can buy them on eBay, on Amazon. And of course they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and finishes around the outside. They've often already made up as a pendant. So super easy to use. You can also spray paint them if you want them a different color, remembering that only that exterior part is going to show. But you can also use any sort of receptacle at all that is suitable, that will have a, a rim and is quite shallow and you can create a little design or picture in there. I made this one up with just a lid, so a tin lid. This one here is a blank, you can see. So just a normal tin lid. Um, and then I filled it up with buttons of all of those lovely metallics, thrown in some little beads and little nail art pieces and then set the resin. So what you can do from here, you can just drill a hole straight through the entire thing and create a, a little loop to add and you could hang that as a pendant on a bear. On Something like that would look fabulous on a steampunk style animal. Um, and it's just that combination of that lovely glossy shine um, and those uh, unusual little pieces that you put in there. Now what you add to your bezels um, is really up to you and the sky is the limit because you can take little old broken bits of jewelry and add them to it. You can um, use glitter, you can drop glitter in there. You can use things like little nail art pieces. So again, this is something you can find online. Go and search nail art accessories and you'll find beautiful little trinkets. Very, very inexpensive that you can add to your designs. You can use buttons like I have. I've certainly done many buttons. My, um, my bunny wears a big pink one. You can go for a color theme. Um, and you can also get them in a, your bezels, your purchase bezels in that bronze color. So you don't always have to add a backing to them, but I'm going to show you the difference. So back, Buttons Bunny has been made with a bronze bezel, blank bezel, and I've done nothing to the back of it. I've just added those buttons because I wanted to go for that really nice dark antique sort of look and it's just come up so beautifully. But in most cases, I will back my bezel with a fabric first. Now, while it might seem uh, that, you know, casting in resin is really simple and you don't really need a tutorial for that. There are a few tips that will make all the difference, which I will share with you, which most people don't tell you about. So I'm going to just remove these pieces here just to be able to show you. So I've just got those set out 
and you can see I've used some pressed flowers which again you can buy readily on eBay they come in a sheet like this in so many different colors so many little little tiny pieces you can cut little pieces off you can use the foliage as I have here in this one and really create a lovely little scene so tweezers are best for doing your bezels I've got a little trinket there of a little flower and in here I've got my fabric which I've already just popped in there so that's just your ordinary bezel and we're just going to add a backing on it now this backing can be fabric it can be scrapbooking paper you can imagine all of the different colors you can use there for example my scrapbooking paper I've just been able to isolate a tiny little bird there and now I've gone ahead and added a couple of little beads and a couple of little pressed um, flower foliage pieces there and then when I add that resin that's going to really come to life so scrapbooking paper of course comes in so many different designs and patterns but of course so does fabric so this is another one where I've just used a fabric so a multicolored fabric at the back and I've added all of my little trinkets beads you can see it's really easy to create something very very interesting so the trick to actually making this work is that we cut the fabric out I use um, fusible web on the back of my fabric pieces you have to trace the back to get the measurement of the inside piece there and it's usually just a little bit smaller now if we were to just tuck that fabric in there and then go ahead and add our resin it's the resin will soak into the fabric and it will really really discolor it so here's the tip that nobody tells you and trust me most people start out on this and have to work this out for themselves what you need to do is to first glue that little piece fabric or scrapbooking paper to your bezel now you can use a couple of products for this I'm going to use my flexible gel medium that I use for so many other things I use for noses and you can also use Mod Podge Mod Podge is probably even better but I'm just taking my small brush and I'm just liberally painting the inside and just those edges of that bezel and then I'm going to drop my fabric piece in if you use the fusible webbing on the back before you cut out your fabric it's just going to give you a cleaner cut especially when you're cutting out little circles because a lot of bezels are circles so I'm just going to press that all down make sure that's all nicely adhered and you can see it's just a little bit of script behind that one which is going to give it a really nice effect and now I'm just going to add that flexible medium to the front of that and so it's sealing that fabric and when I add my resin the resin won't seep through so the color will stay true do remember that whatever colors you use once you pour your resin your whole project will come up just a little bit darker that's just what naturally occurs so if you don't want if you want a really bright colorful project it's a good idea to keep those backing papers and fabrics nice and light so that's all we need to do it's just setting that into place and once that's dry we can go ahead and we can add our resin so what I do like to do though while it is in this stage and it's still tacky I actually like to add my pieces because it's going to keep them nicely in place and it's much easier to do than having them floating around 
So just create, it's very easy to create a sweet little design. And of course, ideally, anything that you're using won't extend higher than the edge of your bezel. Pop that little one in the corner. And that one will center. Now anything that is extending, that is a little higher than the top edge of your bezel, the resin will surround it. And, and it's actually quite a lovely effect. You can see on this one, this little key, it's quite a shallow little bezel. And that little nail art piece just sits above, but it's completely surrounded. It is absolutely gorgeous. Love the keys, they look fantastic. You need to think outside the box with this one. Any sort of receptacle that you have can be used for this. So you can um, use old watch faces, make fantastic bezel pendants, have a look at old jewellery and in thrift stores and that sort of thing. You'll find all sorts of little oddities that you can turn into a beautiful little masterpiece. So you don't always have to be purchasing the product, but like I said, it's very, very uh, simple. To, it's very inexpensive, sorry. Now, another thing that we can do that I want to show you is I absolutely adore making these little tags. Now, this is a fully coated resin tag. What it is, is just a laser cut tag. Again, that's something you can buy on eBay, very inexpensive. These are lovely because they have the little burnt edges, which I really like and they've always got a hole at the top there. So and then I just use old storybooks, um, children's storybooks, illustrations, and I cut out those pattern pieces to suit, and I will do the same thing with my flexible medium or my Mod Podge. So I glue that pattern, that, tam that template, paper template on there. I've then gone ahead and added a little piece from a an old dictionary um, that has the definition of happy um, and have created that beautiful little scene. I've coated it all with that flexible medium or your Mod Podge, let that completely dry. And the beauty of poured resin is that if you pour it onto a flat piece like that, very, very carefully, it will flow to the edges and stop it won't overflow. If you're very careful, it'll just go right to the edge. And what a fabulous finish that gives you. You can imagine the beautiful tags that you can make for your dolls and bears with that one. This is one of my absolute favorites from one of my favorite illustrators, Jane Hissey, and it is Little Bear, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I've done so many of these, and they're really quite addictive, and it's a good idea to have a whole lot ready mix up your resin and pour them all at the same time. So in addition to um, using your pressed flowers, of course you can use little tiny beads, sequins, anything at all, anything that is little and flat. And you can also use for your base pieces where I used fabric, you could use something uh, like a, a glitter foam could go in the base of this one. So you've got a glitter um, background and then every, everything you add on top of that um, will, will be you know, supported by that beautiful glitter background. So there's just so many things you can do. Once you've done them, of course, fantastic. They look fantastic on your little animals. This is a tiny one. These are little nail art pieces that I've added here with this one. Absolutely gorgeous, it works in with my my little puppy, this is part of a puppy tea set, a little poodle puppy. And also talking about other receptacles to use, this one I made with an old spoon. So a little collectible teaspoon. And of course they're a little deeper spoons, so you can add all sorts. I've added a little piece of gingham there, and then some pearls, a little piece of an old earring, even a fabric flower, a little rose and then filled it up with the resin and look at that result, it's just gorgeous. Um, and that, the spoons are great because you can actually just cut them off, fold them over and create a little pendant. So let's get started and uh, actually 
make up, mix up our resin. Now the resin that I use, casting resin, comes in so many different brands. I'm using a Barnes Epoxy Cast. It's probably around about $25 and this makes up a whole lot of jewellery. Um, and you've got your part A and your part B that we mix together. It really doesn't matter the brand of resin that you use, just make sure that it's a casting resin that is for small items like jewellery. They are all much the same. I know that ice resin is very good, I've used it before. This one is local to me, a local Australian company, so uh, that's why I use that one. And the results you can see are absolutely amazing. I mean, that resin is absolutely crystal clear. It's beautiful. I'm really loving this particular brand. So what I'm going to do now is show you exactly how to mix it up. And again, there are little tips for working with resin that you do need to know. So I'm going to be pouring resin onto this one. You can see there that I've added all my pieces. It's all ready to go. And I have also another little um, key there ready to go. So you need to use your receptacle, something that you're going to throw away. This is a little disposable shot glass. And we're going to mix our two parts together. So this is a two to one ratio, this one. I've got a wooden skewer for mixing. You can use plastic spoons. So it's a two to one ratio. So I'm just going to fill my cup. That has my first portion. That's my part B, my part A is the one that we do too. You've got about they're all different within their, with their setting times. This one is about an hour, an hour before it's completely set. Make sure that all drains off. And then we're going to pop that lid on. And we're going to start to mix. Mixing is very important. Mix very, very gently. Because if you mix very vigorously with your resin, you're just adding air bubbles to it. Air bubbles are, they are enemy when working with resin. So you just want to thoroughly mix. It's a bit like mixing muffins. You just gently fold it in. And it does take a while but it's definitely worth the effort, taking your time. Um, any kind of really vigorous action is going to froth it up. So we mix that until it's completely crystal clear. So now I've got that one all mixed and it's very, very clear. So freshly mixed and there are just only a few air bubbles in there to be seen. And I've got my bezel all ready to go. So you've probably got with most of them about 20 minutes to half an hour time to do your pouring. So I'm gonna show you as up close as I can with this one. We're gonna pour right in the center. These little shot glasses are really good for pouring as well. So, cause every time they pour very accurately. So you want to start at the center and just pour some in place and we want to let it travel. 
just want to tip it. Just to be reaching those edges. Add it a little more. Just let that all travel. If anything shifts, don't be too worried because you can use your, your wooden skewer to replace everything. And you can help that resin to flow right up to those edges. So it's just gently making sure everything's submerged and that that resin has traveled all the way. Just encourage that to flow into the areas that it hasn't. may want to add a little more. Important to have it sitting nice and flat on a flat surface. You can also add text to these. So you might want to add a little word across there. And you can see that little B there is just extending above a little bit, but it's completely surrounded in the resin. I like to check with my magnifying glass just to make absolutely sure that I've caught everything. And then the next trick is the perfect way to get rid of air bubbles. Now, because the resin's gone in there, it's reacting to several different things, fabrics and pieces, it will create little air bubbles and you want to remove those. You just need a straw and you'll want to go ahead and just hold the end of the straw just over your project and just lightly blow as I will. just over the top of that and you'll see all of those little air bubbles magically disappear. Do check on these as they're sitting because more bubbles can come up while it's curing and you'll still be able to go ahead, lightly blow over the top of those pieces and those air bubbles will be gone. So those are the tricks that people don't tell you. Um, that really do make all the difference. An air bubble in your project will really annoy you. Um, so this, that's how to get your perfect finish. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill my other pieces and then we're going to come back and see the finished result when they're all set. And the setting time, as I said, is around about an hour. Different products um, differ in their curing time. Uh, but you can still move and play around with it for probably about half an hour with most of them. So let's come back when they're all set. So here we are back with our completed projects and our resin is all beautifully set and you can see we've got some gorgeous results there. Now what you can do, if you like a really domed look, you can go ahead and mix up a second batch and you can do a second pour over the top. It'll really give you that little bubble look. It's not entirely necessary. It depends on the project and the shapes you're using. This one is going to be used in my next month's masterclass project. So that might give you a little tiny hint there. Beautiful little wildflower look and you can see I've just popped a series of things in that lid 
just give you an idea of really making a little scene. They're just so beautiful. Absolutely love them. Love that really glassy look. This is one of my favourites. Just stunning. This one is one that I made quite some time ago and you can see that I just used a print behind an old vintage book page and just a little dragonfly in the middle. As simple as that and you've got a really gorgeous little pendant. So the sky is the limit and uh, you're only limited by your imagination. So I hope this has given you a whole new bunch of skills and I'm looking forward to seeing you accessorize all of your bears and dolls with them. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you picked up a few useful tips there and I'm looking forward to seeing some lovely sparkly creations come up on our Facebook page. If you haven't joined, come along and join us. I'll put the link down below. You can share anything that you've made from my patterns and tutorials. It's going to be a sparkly week this week. I can't wait to see the incredible creations you're going to make. Looking forward to that. Also, if you want to chat to me personally, you can always follow me on Instagram and you can private message me there. Definitely comment below. Tell me what you're enjoying. Tell me what you'd like to see. Look forward coming up in uh, very soon. I have a new pattern for you all, new free pattern and project for you all. So everybody have a very shiny week. Keep on being creative. Remember to pay all of those good things forward. And until next time, it is Huru from me.